All right, feels like this presentation is running a little long. Uh, so just bear with me. We'll try to wrap this up. Um, so just to reiterate sort of what we've already looked at, uh, the goal of GIS uh, is to help people and companies do their work better, faster, and cheaper through visualization, the maps, okay, database management, you know, attribute tables, doing uh, specific queries, and spatial analysis, which we've uh, looked at with the Dr. Snow example. So, some ways GIS is used. Now, you can go to ESRI.com and click on Industries, and you'll get probably more information on how GIS is used than you might even care for. Uh, but at any rate, uh, as we can see on this slide, um, GIS is used for emergency services such as uh, fire and police, distributing them, uh, where's the best place to put firehouses, where should the be, uh, police be monitoring areas, where's the high crime rates, that sort of thing. Environmental, uh, business, industry, government, um, which would be at all levels, um, and politics, covers elections a lot. Uh, I don't know if you remember uh, in the last presidential election we had, um, there was uh, the map uh, on TV. I mean, they were quite proud of it. Uh, that was GIS at work. But also for governmental decision making, okay? GIS helps organizations, agencies, and governments help uh, to work together to develop strategies for managing communities. It provides the tools to access and process information from a variety of sources and displays it in a spatial uh, visual medium. Parcel maps like these are used by local and regional governments uh, for building inspections and other public works projects. Uh, in my personal, or I'm sorry, my professional um, career in GIS, we were using parcel maps from the county auditor all the time. Um, so, and, and a lot of the thing is, uh, GIS data is a lot of times already available free because your tax dollars have already paid for it, uh, which is a nice benefit. Um, so if you need data, um, many counties, at least here in Ohio and, and across the U.S. really, have data that you can get your hands on, uh, usually pretty cheap uh, if it's not free. I mean, you know, especially considering how much work goes into just building a single layer, even at the county level. Education, uh, a geographic perspective, and GIS allows schools to manage their districts and monitor national policy trends more effectively. GIS helps schools organize the most effective bus routes. Uh, in districts with multiple elementary or middle schools, GIS can help assign students to schools based on their geographic area. Districts can use GIS to plan building expansions or choose the best location for a new school. This image uh, in this slide shows the demographic breakdown for schools in the Dallas County School District. Defense management, of course. GIS means more to the military than just tracking troop movements and planning strategy. It is used to support decisions at every level of command. This particular image shows GIS being used for facility management. The red box uh, here indicates the selected building, and the left pane displays that building's attribute data. And you'll even see, you know, building layers uh, even in some of the bigger cities too, for the city government for planning, that sort of thing. Uh, here's that concept taken to the next level in this screenshot: um, 3D buildings. Um, here we see for real estate management. Um, real estate agents can um, have a parcel layer and they can have uh, a certain symbology flag, you know, where the sales are. Uh, but remember, you know, you can go back and uh, query data, and there's an exercise in the Getting to Know ArcGIS book uh, using uh, real estate as a platform for the lesson. Um, but you can query data. You know, you've got a family, um, they need a four bedroom house, two bath, you know, whatever those uh, features that they're looking for. Um, you can just do a query on that and, and find that house, you know, uh, that meets those criteria. Um, a very powerful tool. This particular uh, screenshot uh, shows how GIS is helping to uh, track commercial real estate in Chicago. Utility management, um, that's what I do uh, where I work, Van Horn Hoover & Associates. Um, we're helping utility companies uh, just start off with, a, I'll say, a first-generation GIS. Um, 
but GIS goes so much deeper than than that. I mean, it would blow your mind uh, how utilities are are really using GIS right now. I mean, you know, the buzzword in utilities right now is the enterprise GIS, which basically means it's GIS all encompassing. Um, it plugs into just about every part of the entire company and uh, it really works out well. Uh, it helps to maintain a safe and operational network. Uh, this particular screenshot shows how utility networks are traced in Riverside, California um, where they use GIS to determine the most effective routes to run utilities to homes or businesses uh, via the wires or pipelines. Okay, I'll just try to make this fast. We'll just run a few more of these. Uh, transportation management, uh, public safety, which uh, is probably going to be uh, pretty important uh, for what you're majoring in. Uh, hospital facilities um, and emergency response. Uh, this one I want to uh, hit on. The, the field of emergency response is what really turned me on to GIS personally. Um, I remember as a kid I was really into um, astronomy. Um, you know, kind of maybe wanted to be an astronomer or an astronaut, something like that. You know, you sort of grow out of those things, but you know, there's always something that you, you keep kind of looking back on it, just sort of see how it's going. So, uh, when the Space Shuttle Columbia uh, blew up in, I think it was February of 2003, um, there was a school in Texas um, that did a lot of work with using GPS, GIS, uh, and they were uh, just a vital asset to helping to map the debris field, to finding and recovering the Space Shuttle Columbia so they could find out what happened, okay? Uh, this screenshot is uh, a video I made of it. Um, I'm going to put it up for uh, download so you can watch it. This is a video I made for GIS Day a couple years back when I was in school. And, uh, you know, this is a story that really got my attention as far as GIS is concerned. Um, take a look at it. Alright, we made it. Last slide. Um, this is uh, regarding GIS Day. Um, now, I told you that uh, I went to school, went to school at Rhodes, okay? And uh, Rhodes puts on GIS Day every year where uh, they bring in a bunch of schools and showcase um, not only how they are learning GIS, how they are using GIS, um, but they also bring in uh, professional users um, to come in and speak. Um, like, last year they had um, the Homeland Security Officer uh, for Lima, uh, Lima, Ohio, come in, and uh, Russ Decker is his name, come in and explain how their 911 services are using it and how they're using E911, which is basically using your cell phone as a GPS, since so many cell phones uh, have GPS already on there. Uh, this technology is called LBRS, Location Based Response System. But at any rate, um, now, the National GIS Day is held uh, in mid-November along with Geography Awareness Week. Um, usually it's on the Wednesday of that week. Um, but because of scheduling and that sort of thing, Rhodes has their GIS Day uh, at the end of their fall quarter, okay, which is in December. And immediately after that, and it sort of works out well for some of the high schools that come in. But anyway, this is an open invitation um, for you guys uh, if you want to come down to Lima that day, I'll have a date. I don't think a date's been set at this point. Um, but uh, as soon as the date gets solid, I will certainly post that probably on the class calendar. Um, and if you want to come down to Lima and be a part of that, that's great. Um, now, since you guys are much further north than that, and we've, by the way, we've had schools from Michigan come down, so there's no excuse. Um, but certainly I'd be willing to give uh, extra credit to anybody willing to make the trip down. Um, but uh, also there's um, certainly because GIS Day is in October, um, or I'm sorry, November, that, you know, we'll, we'll be in, in session, you know, and certainly there may be GIS, um, GIS Day activities taking place around uh, maybe Toledo or something like that. Um, I know GIS is huge in Toledo. Probably some of the um, middle schools and high schools um, maybe doing something for it. If you hear about something like that, hey, I encourage you to check it out if you can. Um, and uh, let me know, you know. Uh, see, you know, if you go, um, see if you can get some sort of confirmation that you went, some sort of signature, something like that. Um, you know, and I'll certainly uh, give you some extra credit for that. Also, um, 
there's going to be another presentation um, that I'm posting, and it's going to show you more in depth about um, the ArcView uh, or ArcGIS platform, um, and you know how to navigate through that. So be sure to watch that also. All right, uh, take a break and uh, have a good one.